Hello everyone, this video is going to talk about how to set up the laser Doppler anemometer system or a laser Doppler anemometer system. Uh, you want to notice whenever you're using a high power laser, you want to have some kind of warning light to tell people that you're running a laser in the room because the room will theoretically have no windows. So you can see that our laser is set up in this room. Uh, the, the windows, there's only one window and it's covered. So the laser system, oh, I'm running into things is uh, set up on a traverse. So the traverse is here. Uh, the traverse can move left and right and up and down. So the control for the traverse is, is on the side. Uh, this is the zero location and you have another control here. So you want to be careful that this traverse doesn't control, doesn't run into the hood because otherwise it'll damage the connection you have so this whole traverse will move left and right and this mounting bracket will move up and down so you have two axis control so this is our laser we're looking at here so you have two lasers that come out and converge into a measurement location here the the computer control setup looks like this i can't zoom out anymore so uh, I'll do the best I can. You don't need a password for the setup we have. You just click OK and it'll load on. There's only one software on here. It is this Flow 200. Um, it's an LDA software. Okay, so to use the Traverse, you need to turn on the power for the Traverse down here. There is a power switch in the back, so just turn it on. It's actually already on, so I'll leave it. There's an emergency stop, so if, if you set it to move in a certain way and, and it's going to run into something, you can just press this button very quickly and stop it right away. It's important to note that if you turn it back on, it will continue to move the way it was set before. Or if you just release the emergency switch, you, you push it in, the unit will go off. If you rotate it, it'll come back on. Um, and it'll go back to moving wherever it was before. So you either need to remove the obstacle or turn the entire unit off and back on. Um, and then it'll just sit still. So if you have a problem with one of the traverses, these two lights will turn red. The third light, you can do three dimensions. Uh, we don't have a third axis, so we only have these two. They should stay turned off. If they do go red, then there's probably a, con a connection problem with um, the connector here. So to move the traverse, we have this software. We're gonna click on this button here it's called Traverse Control, and we're going to turn on our two axes. We have X and Y. So we have, whenever you turn on the unit, it thinks it's at zero, zero. We're going to, we can adjust this desired location. So this number is the direction it's going to move and how much it's going to move. So usually I will set it to move, this is in millimeters, I'll set it to move uh, 10 millimeters or a centimeter at a time, otherwise I have to click a lot. So this left button, if I click it, you can see the traverse is going to to move to the left. It moves relatively slowly. It's quite slow, so you can't really use it for um, dynamic movement, but it does, it's very precise. So you can move it on the order of I think a hundredth of a millimeter, but I can't remember that for sure. Um, so check the owner's manual for that. And you can see it's now we have our actual position is uh, 30 instead of zero. So we've changed our position. If you need to zero, you can push this zero button and it'll move the axes to their actual stopping point. Um, you just want to be careful when you do that because it'll move to the, if there's something in the way, then you want to be careful. I think it's zero or reference. I can't remember which button, but I'm not going to push it now. All right, so to actually use the laser, before you turn it on, you obviously want to wear uh, laser line goggles. This is a 532 nanometer, uh, 75 milliwatt laser. It's a class 3B. These are um, four plus something laser line goggles. I can't remember what that means, but it was it was uh, good enough for this laser according to the people I bought them from. So you want to wear these to set up the laser. All right, so this laser is kept in a case. Um, it has an optical fiber 
and a, a power connector. So this power connector comes off when you um, when you store the unit. So you'll have the unit um, with the optical fiber in the box. So maybe I'll show the box at the end of the video, but it's pretty straightforward. It's just a padded box. This unit sits on this. Oh, I won't focus this close. Sits on this. Um, slide so the slide is connected to this mounting bracket with two bolts so you can take the mounting bracket itself off if you disconnect these two bolts you can take this off and it would also fit inside this silver box this aluminum box you can put the whole laser assembly inside of this box and that was the box was built to protect the laser assembly from any radiant and pen radiant heat flux from a fire so we're using this in a combustion lab so if you're using the the laser to measure the flow above a fire we were doing it originally you want the heat th this case is a heat sink so you want to keep the case cool so if the case gets hot then the laser can't cool itself and it'll overheat all right so you have this uh this is an optical fiber you want to make sure the optical fiber doesn't bend or kink or get stepped on or uh, get crushed uh, it is aligned in a specific way using this this bit of the uh, the apparatus here. I've never aligned it myself. The user's manual talks about how to align it. Um, this the top of the case. You have this V plus with an arrow, so you know the velocity this is measuring is positive in this axis. So this is a one-dimensional LDA, so we only get measurements in one dimension. They make multi-dimensional LDAs, but this isn't one of them. So if you want to change this axis, or the measurement axis, you can loosen these bolts on top. There's two of them. And rotate the whole laser assembly around. So you can move it. Uh, that can control either way. You can move the laser on this bracket. If you loosen these two bolts, you can slide it along this, this uh, traverse. There's not a whole lot of play. You have about an inch control here. Uh, so on this, that's the only third axis control you have until you move this whole uh, 8020 extruded aluminum mounting assembly. If you want to move this traverse up and down, you can loosen these bolts and slide it up and down. If you need to take it apart, you take these four bolts off. Uh, this thing is quite heavy, so be careful. And if you need to remove this assembly, from the 8020, there's also bolts on the bottom that are quite similar. Uh, the whole unit is quite heavy. It has got uh, legs that extend this way. You can see slightly there, there they go down over there. Uh, but there aren't legs that extend towards where I'm standing, so you make sure the unit doesn't tip this direction because it'll get real heavy real fast. This is the power and control cable, and you can see it goes here. And there's a big notch. You can see there's a big tab here and a big notch here. Uh, so you know it's easy to tell this can only go on in one direction. So once you stick it on, you're going to rotate this top and it'll, it'll pull the unit into place. So we stick it in, get this lined up, and then rotate this top bit and you'll hear it click into place. So now it's attached. The unit is, is stable and powered, or it's got its power cable. I usually attach this optical fiber to this power cable loosely just so they're, they're kind of together and the optical fiber's out of the way. Optical fiber goes to this laser control unit. I remember because it's the one with the key. Uh, so the, it screws in this it's called it's got a label of fiber on the back this just screws in you can see the glass the filament inside of there if you look carefully so we'll stick it in and then just loosely tighten it we can turn on the laser uh, control unit out you'll see it power on and uh, I may make another video that talks about what these these controls mean, but assuming you know how to use the actual sample software, I don't have an experiment to 
to show measurements right now, but we can turn on the laser power using this key and it takes a few minutes, maybe five minutes for the laser to go to full power. But if we look, um, I have glasses on so I can't see the laser without. Uh, but you can see the laser on this card. So where the laser, the two lasers come together, that is the measurement point. Uh, so you can say they, they converge and then diverge again. So where they come together, that is where we're going to make our measurement. Anything else I wanted to say about this? So whenever you're not using a laser, you do want to turn the power off. Make sure you wear your glasses. This video does not cover all laser safety, um, personal protective equipment you need to use when using an LDA. It's just a general overview for how to set up the LDA we have in this lab uh, because I'm leaving and I'm the only one that's used it so far. So if you need to take this laser mounting bracket off for some reason, you can take it off. There's two bolts here that hold it. If you want to take this uh, T bracket that holds it, the bolts are on the back. If you want to take this whole bracket off this traverse, uh, it's connected underneath. And this extruded aluminum is held together with uh, corner brackets and sliding, I forget what these are called, but it's 8020. Uh, it's expensive but quite strong. I would recommend there's a different way to mount this than to use these side brackets. You can actually drill and have stronger fittings, which I didn't do when I built this originally. The unit is counterbalanced with a 15-pound uh, dumbbell. Uh, that was just done because there's so much torque on this on this traverse because this traverse is so heavy so I wanted a little bit to be on the back so it wasn't so bad. I think that's all. I hope this I hope you find this useful. Make sure you read the owner's manual before you use this because uh, this video does not talk about all of the safety stuff you need to do when you use a high power laser. Uh, so I uh, hope you found this useful and have a good day.